You know, having just heard the plenary speakers, uh, it's really clear that the, the context for our work in youth health uh, is hugely important. Uh, I was having some very bizarre flashbacks during that session about the Partridge family and the Brady Bunch that I'm not going to get into. Um, but I do want to provide just some brief, uh, some context actually for, for my very brief uh, opening remarks tonight. First, my name is David Goldsmith and I'm one of seven people who serve on the ISIS, or I should say the YTH board uh, with Deb and uh, several members of her team. And I've spent the last 25 years uh, working at the intersection of technology and social change, most recently with a company that builds social networks that are focused on patients with chronic and complex health conditions. Um, this is my, actually my third year attending this conference, and I attend a lot of conferences over the course of the year that relate to all aspects of health and technology, and I can tell you this is really among my favorites. It's an outstanding conference. If you're new to this, I'm sure you're going to discover much the same. Um, so, so that's a little bit of, of context for my role here uh, today, but I do want to offer a little bit more. You know, 35 years ago, uh, long before most of you were born, uh, I, I was a youth advocate for Planned Parenthood. Uh, not just any Planned Parenthood, uh, Planned Parenthood of Utah. As most of you know, uh, Utah is a state known as deeply pro-Republican, pro-family, pro-religion, and pro-life. And as it turns out, deeply promiscuous. <laughs> in, in 1979, the year I graduated high school, uh, Utah had one of the highest per capita rates of teen pregnancy in the U.S. But there's some additional context I want to touch upon. In 1979, Jimmy Carter was president. His administration was quite progressive when it came to support for family planning. Uh, they significantly increased Title X grants to organizations like Planned Parenthood. Uh, in Utah, some of those funds went, went towards uh, Planned Parenthood's Youth Advocates Program, uh, which was, was then just a pilot uh, program and one of the first of its kind uh, in the nation. I applied to join and I was honored to be accepted. Uh, I was also quite pleased to discover that the program consisted of me and 10 other girls, um, which enabled me to learn a lot very, very quickly. Um, but so back to context. Um, bear in mind that in 1979, Al Gore, who was then a young uh, congressman from uh, Tennessee, uh, had not yet invented the inter internet. Um, so, which means that as dreadful as this may sound, uh, you know, there was no Facebook, um, there was no Tumblr, there was no Twitter, there was no Instagram, um, and of course there was no Google. Uh, and as if that wasn't bad enough, uh, we didn't yet have personal computers. This little gem didn't make it to the market until two years after I graduated high school. Uh, so, but here's what we did have. Uh, we had a serious and growing problem with teen pregnancy, uh, or perhaps more specifically, teen pregnancy prevention. In Utah, in particular, we really sucked at it. Uh, about eight in 10 teen pregnancies at the time were considered unintentional, uh, which leads me back to context. Because in Utah in 1979, there was a widely held belief, one deeply woven into the religious and cultural fabric of our state, uh, that our teen pregnancy problem actually had a very logical explanation. Teens were too promiscuous. You know, the conventional wisdom at that time was quite simple. Teens were promiscuous because organizations like Planned Parenthood routinely and unapologetically promoted promiscuity. That's right, we encouraged teens to have sex. Now, you might ask how exactly we did that. Um, because we talked about it. The prevailing view at that time was that if we talked about it, teens would do it, whether the it was drugs or booze or each other. So 
as it turns out, there were lots of people in Utah in 1979 who didn't want us talking about it. Not even a little bit. Which is one day, which is why one day I got called to the vice principal's office where I was greeted not just by the vice principal but by the school police officer and by the school guidance counselor. Uh, and they were there in full force to inform me that the school board had received a complaint from a concerned community member that I had been passing out pornographic literature on behalf of Planned Parenthood. I was told in no uncertain terms that that was a violation of Utah law. It didn't really matter that I hadn't been passing out anything to my fellow students, let alone pornographic literature. What mattered was that I was the source of the state's growing teen pregnancy problem. <laughs> so, so that was the context for my work as a youth advocate in 1979. Fast forward to today, and you know, the context for our work in this field is radically different. Uh, attitudes towards sex education have evolved in, in many states. Uh, rates of teen pregnancy are at historical lows, and you know, the tools at our disposal are not just extraordinarily powerful, but practically ubiquitous. In 2013, all of us here today are approaching our work in this field in remarkable new ways, uh, and it's working. This kind of change, you know, meaningful, measurable change, is the context for this conference. It's also the context for the change in the name of this conference. In previous years, this was, as most of you know, sex tech. Uh, it seemed really to the point, um, and it got a lot of attention. But something really integral to the conference was missing uh, from the name, and that was health. Today in 2013, all of you working in this field are working on issues fundamentally related not only to sexual health of youth and young adults, but to their emotional, physical, and spiritual health as well. And the context of your work is a technologically driven, you know, hyper-connected demographic for whom 24-7 connectivity is a given. So it seems only fitting that sex tech evolved into youth tech health or, youth li or YTH Live. It's a very good description of our focus here over the next two days, and it will no doubt be the context for many great conversations, presentations, and debates. This is your conference, this is our context, and I'd like to welcome you.